Uh, thank you. It's good to see you again, Chairman Powell. I want to start by asking about the Fed's monetary policy and inflation in particular. I am very concerned that the Fed is going to raise rates too early, which would seriously harm the economic recovery. As you stated last week, much of the recent rise in inflation had actually been expected. I strongly believe that the recent spike in inflation will only be temporary, and that shouldn't cause the Fed to raise interest rates too soon. In the early months of the pandemic, prices fell incredibly low. So now a year later, the year over year rise in prices looks very high. But that was only because prices fell to artificially low levels last year at this time. This is something that everyone saw coming for many months, so it shouldn't come as a surprise at all. How much of the recent rise in inflation do you attribute to artificially low prices from early in the pandemic? And how much do you attribute to other effects like supply bottlenecks, pushing up prices, and a genuine rebound in economic activity? Well, um, a pretty substantial part or perhaps all of the overshoot in inflation comes from categories that are directly affected by the reopening of the economy, uh, such as used cars, and, used cars and trucks in particular. There's sort of a perfect storm of uh, very strong demand and weak supply due to the reopening of the economy and various factors. We see airplane tickets, we see hotel prices, we see other things. Um, so th those, are, those are things that we would look to to stop going up and ultimately to, to start to decline as these situations resolve themselves. They don't speak to a broadly tight economy into the kind of thing that, that has led to uh, high inflation over time. I will say that these effects have been larger than we expected. And, and they may turn out to be more persistent than, than we've expected. But the, the, the incoming data are, are very much consistent with, with the, the view that these are, these are factors that will wane over time and that inflation will then move down toward, uh, toward our goals. And we'll be monitoring that carefully. Of course, uh, we're prepared to use our tools as appropriate if that turns out not to be the case uh, to, you know, to guide inflation to 2%. Thank you. Let me follow up on that, because we know that inflation statistics are fundamentally flawed right now due to, due to the pandemic. We typically measure inflation using a basket of goods and services that represents what people usually purchase, but the pandemic uh, completely scrambled what everyone was spending money on. People weren't traveling or going out to restaurants, so spending on those items stopped entirely, while spending on groceries surged dramatically. As a result, a lot of economists question whether we should be relying so heavily on inflation statistics that we know don't represent what people are actually spending money on. So my question is, do you have any concerns with relying on traditional inflation statistics, which we know are unreliable right now in setting monetary policy? I, I think the overall point uh, is that the data that we're looking at in the labor market and for inflation and for growth, it's in such an unusual setting of reopening the economy. We have to be very humble about our ability to, to really try to draw a signal out of it. And it, and it may take some patience to see what, what really uh, is happening. Specifically on inflation, you're, you're really talking about consumer price inflation, the CPI. The, we actually use at the Fed PCE, personal consumption expenditure inflation. And, and that, the basket is actually updated on a monthly basis for PCE, and that's one of its more attractive features from our standpoint. Still, at a time like this, when people are changing their, uh, you know, their consumption patterns in ways that are outside of experience, I, I, would, I would say there's also a challenge there, even though we are, our measure is, in fact, updating monthly in terms of, uh, in terms of its basket. Uh, switching gears, I want to ask about the Main Street Lending Program. It seems clear that both the Main Street program and the municipal program generally improved uh, credit access. Uh, Fed officials have acknowledged that the Main Street program would likely have been more productive with different bank incentives and more generous terms. And as you know, the eligibility threshold for the municipal program excluded many cities and counties uh, that were deeply affected by the pandemic. What do you believe are the most important adjustments the Fed could make to the Main Street Lending Program to make it more effective in future crises? So I, I would say the Main Street Lending Program 
uh, overall was affected. It ma effective. It made a couple thousand dollars, a couple thousand loans, uh, and it helped a lot of businesses. So, um, if if I could um, take away a lesson there, it is that it's it's very difficult to reach small businesses across America, and uh, I would look to the PPP program and things like that. A lot of these very small businesses didn't didn't need unforgivable loans. These were statutorily unforgivable. They could not be forgiven. And uh, so it, it, I would look in that direction going forward. In terms of um, the municipal loan uh, liquidity facility, I, I think that, that the overall assessment of that is that it was a resounding success. And, and the test of it is not how many loans we made. The test of it is how much lending took place. The, the municipal uh, markets were collapsing. There was no lending going on. The, the, the people who put their money in those funds that wind up making all the loans were taking their money out. We announced the facility, uh, and all of that turned around. And by by uh, by, through much of last year, municipalities, states had great access to market, including ones with relatively low ratings. Record amounts of borrowing took place at low low rates. So it really worked. I mean, it 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 really stands for the proposition that a backstop is better than a direct loan in a lot of cases. So I, I, we would look at it that way, and I, I think that's the way it's generally seen. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.